Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Sami here. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto had the power of Phoenix, part 7. Hope you'll enjoy this video. So before we start please subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's get into the video. When Naruto arrived at the south gates his team, and Tazuna were already there. Naruto's attire had changed though. He had on a pair of black blue jean shorts, and a type vest with his sword, strapped on his back. Sasuke looked over, and said do you really know how to use that thing, or is it for show? Naruto said you wouldn't know unless I need it. As he took off toward the wave. Sakura said to Naruto, get back here, you don't know the way to the wave's country. Naruto said actually Sakura, I was there about 4 years ago. Some guy named Gato was trying to buy all the shipping rights at the time. What a dickhead. And enjoyed the reaction to the name Gato from Tazuna, as everyone continued the mission. About 2 hours later Naruto saw a puddle of water in the road, and stopped, and said hey be this, and butthead, get your asses out of there or Zabuza is going to kick your asses, or I might do it for him, again. Sakura, and Sasuke looked at him like he was crazy, and Kakashi was sweaty. Suddenly the puddle shifted, and two men slowly rose out of it, looked pale, and said to Naruto, what are you doing here in a voice? Naruto snorted, and said okay, is the idiot who hired Zabuza. The taller one said Gato, he hired us to kill the old man there. Please don't kill us. Naruto said to Kakashi, talk to the client please, and see if he can tell us anything else. My colleagues, and I are going to have a little chat. Kakashi nodded, and said you know they're missing nins right? Naruto said they are also spies for. Kakashi nodded, and Naruto said tell Zabuza, and Haku to meet us on the road when we get to wave, and don't try any of that scary shit, or I will bitch slap both of them. Now go. And both men nodded before jumping away, walking over to Kakashi, and saying, we got an inside informant later. Kakashi said you know I will have to take you in when we get back to face the Hokage. Naruto said yes, but I'm going to talk Sabuza into coming back with us. Kakashi said, why did they act so scared around you? Sasuke soared over before he had a chance to say anything, and said hey dope, how come you told Kakashi what to do, and what was up with those guys? How did you know they were there? Naruto sweat dropped, and said Sakura, when was the last time trained? Sakura said two weeks ago, why? Naruto said, and how long do you think a puddle of water could last with the heat we had the past two weeks on the road? Causing both of them to sweat drop. Naruto muttered idiots. And continued walking, and Kakashi said, we don't have to continue the mission since the client lied. Naruto asked Kakashi what Tarzan's reaction was when I mentioned Gato when we left the village two hours ago. Kakashi said truthfully, I don't know. Naruto slapped his forehead, and faster than anyone could see the book in Kakashi's hand was vaporized in flames, and a click was heard coming from Naruto, who was removing his hand from his sword. It left three people with their mouths open, and Kakashi weeping on the ground. They continued on their mission. Naruto smiled, as he thought back to one year ago. Flashback. Naruto was currently in rain country working on a modified Drasengan that could incorporate ice. Since he has an affinity to wind and water and earth he can make wood out of earth and water or ice out of wind and water, but that is also harder. He was getting ready to take a break when he felt a presence arrive and said hello stranger, can I help you with something? The person who looked like a girl walked over and said I was wondering, are you able to do that because of a bloodline? Naruto said yes and no, Haku. As he turned to her. Haku asked, how do you know my name? Naruto smiled and said my name is Naruto Kazama and I am the son of Arashi Kazama, the yellow flash. My grandfather is the Toad Jiraiya, and also one of my teachers. I am currently training, but have yet to find a teacher, to help me with my style, and I am also looking for someone to help with ice. My grandfather was able to discover through his spy network about you, and him. I have a scroll for you, and you master for a proposal, as well as a small sign of my interest. There is $100,000 sealed with the proposal, as well as instructions to meet me, and him to discuss the deal face to face. I just was waiting till I found you to give it to me. May I? Pointing toward his pocket. Haku who was reaching for her, and also starting one hand signs nodded, and Naruto slowly reached for a scroll, and pulled it out handing it to her with both hands, so she could see he was not attacking. Haku slowly reached for it, and Naruto flamed away. The next day Jiraiya and Naruto were at the same spot when Zabuza walked over with Haku, and said so what exactly is this deal? Naruto said simply, I am currently on a training trip with my family, and, as I told Haku I am the son of Arashi Kazama, the yellow flash of Konoha. As you already know my father had a lot of enemies, and who would like nothing more than to kill me for being his son. I will not live a life afraid so I am learning from the best in each field I can. Jiraiya here, my grandfather has heard of you, and your assistant, and one of the seven swordsmen, would be a great kenjutsu teacher, and I would also like to learn a few ice, since I can use ice, as well as wood. I propose a one month lesson to help me with my style. In exchange you will receive $500,000 divided into one fourth each week of the month. At the end of the month Jiraiya would also like to offer you a yearly bonus of $100,000 per year, on any info you come across, that would affect either the Kazama family or Kanoha. 
simple knowledge, and you can just send it through a secure messenger. You can also tell Tweedledee, and dumb in the woods behind me, I can kill them easily, as I had this place set in case you decided to attack first, and ask question later. So demon of the mist, what do you say? I will even have my grandmother throw in some medicine for Haku there for free. Zabuza looked at him, and said who's your grandmother? The person walked out of the woods, and said my name is Tsunade of the Sanins. Zabuza paled, and said kid, I like your style, having two of the world's most dangerous people train you, and then wanting me also. Fine, but only after you fight me in a battle to see if you have any skills. Then flashback. Naruto chuckled to himself, as they kept walking. About 5 o'clock that evening an ice mirror appeared in the middle of the road, and out stepped two people, and Kakashi was about to say something when Naruto said, so I see you knows is fixed, how's Zabuza? Zabuza said I still don't know how the hell you pulled that one off kid. So what do you want? Naruto said simply, what stick ship paying you? Zabuza said 10,000. Why? Naruto said, he has any kind of security beside you, and your men. Zabuza said about 200 merc. Not much for someone like you. Naruto was hurt, and said well sorry for pissing the Miss Village off. Zabuza started to laugh, and said is that what you called it? You know they gave you a nickname for disposing of over 1200 ninja in one attack. They have a bounty on your head for 2 billion dollars. Kakashi looked at Naruto, and asked what they were calling him. Naruto sighed, and said I guess I will have to tell the story. It all started when I was getting ready to finish my training under Zabuza. Flashback. Zabuza okay kid, let's see what you feel. Naruto turned toward the village they were staying in, and said yes, it feels like someone's getting ready to attack. They both took off toward the village, and when they got there they saw the entire village was surrounded by Miss Ninja. Naruto said shit, my family, and Hakus are there. We have to help them. Zabuza said what do you have in mind? It looks like most of the mist is here. Naruto looked at the field, and said you see any women in the group Zabuza. Zabuza looked at him, and said no, why? Naruto got a fox grin, and Zabuza learned he was going to do something. Naruto said I got an idea, but Gambuntas is going to kill my grandfather later. And he enters Jiraiya, and quickly summons Gambunta. Gambunta said what pervert do you want? Narjiraiya said I need you to perform a combination transformation, combi henge, to save the village. Gambunta nodded, and made Jiraiya changed. Then flashback. Zabuza interrupts, and said he had music start playing all over the area, singing I'm too sexy, as he turned the frog into a 200 feet nude blonde female with pigtails, and only being barely covered with two whiffs of smoke. The entire army was knocked out from blood loss. That is how he became known, as the sexy blonde. Naruto smiled, as everyone looked at him, and he said what can I say? If you got it, use it. Zabuza said so you obviously did not call me here for a social call, what do you want? Naruto sighed, and said I will triple what Gatos pays you to act hurt until the bridge is almost complete, and keep an eye out on the little pest. Should something change, Haku knows how to get to me. When you decide to attack, put frost on the windows of the house. We draw Gato out. You help us kill him, and his men, you get paid, waves get bridges, everyone's happy, but Gato. Then you, and your men can decide on joining Kanoha since your term is almost up, or you can continue, being a missing nin, and we still pay you for your service. Zabuza nodded, and said fine. See you soon kid. As you left. Sakura said, he's pulling out leg right. Naruto smirked, and said I will let you wonder about that, let's go. Naruto was pissed, as he looked at the last three men in front of him who all stood ready to attack, and he asked himself, how the hell did I get myself into this shit? Oh yeah, the little dipshit over there. Looking at the Gato standing behind his 200 merc. Flashback. After Team 7 made it to Tazana's house everyone was watching him, and Sasuke was brooding, as usual. Since Kakashi did not have to fight he decided to begin tree climbing early. Since Naruto already knew it, he got guard duty for the week. The week went by quickly, unfortunately the damn Ichiha prick had activated his Sharingan, making him think he's a god. The only reason he activated it was when he was doing the tree climbing, he let his anger flare, and blew himself off the tree, and toward the Sakura who was on the ground admiring her crush after her first time up the tree trimming her fingernails with it so she could look nice for him. When she heard the explosion she looked up, and stuck her upwards, making it look like she was attacking him. Unfortunately thanks to the pink haired bimbo when Sasuke saw it he got scared, and activated it allowing himself to dodge. The bridge was almost complete when Zabuza and Haku arrived, and looked like shit. Naruto asked what happened, and where's the brothers. Zabuza, who was being treated by Haku, said that damn prick Gato heard when they came, and told me, and Haku you were coming. He double crossed us, and sent for ninja from the mist, and told them I was here also with you. They attacked us, and there were 20 of them, but we got some of them, but the rest will be coming for you probably at the bridge. Takashi sighed, and said, will you help us? Zabuza said yes, the kid here has helped us many times, and I would like to see Gato pay for this. Sakura asked why are you helping Naruto? The missing nin. Zabuza said I am only a missing nin after the Mizukich began to fear the seven swordsmen. 
The people started to respect us more than him, so he attacked us with his personal guards. I don't know if any of the others survived, but after that we went on the run, and he said we attacked him. That's why I am missing Nin. I plan to return and clear our name and remove the Mizukage, but sadly it looks like it won't happen. Naruto said to Sakura, what was the first lesson Kakashi tried to teach us? Look underneath. Not everything is as it appears. After explaining how he had overheard Sabusa and the demon brothers talking about the sexy blonde and how he had heard about the reward for him. Being the greedy little shitty as he sent a message to Mist, and now the rest you can say is history. Of the 20 that came, 12 from Mist came with Gato this morning. Zabuza and Haku had stayed, wanting revenge for the demon brothers who were killed by the Mist, and also to help kill the little shithead. When Kakashi saw everything he had Sasuke and Sakura watching over to Zuna and his family behind them on the bridge. Not taking the chance of an ambush at their home he had brought them. Kakashi took 4, as did Zabuza, and Haku took 5 together, and Naruto got the last 3. Oh, did I forget to mention the mercs who are all looking on wanting to enter the fight also. Flashback end. Naruto calmed his emotions and started doing one hand signs behind his back as he reached for his sword with the other hand and a mist with red hair said oh, you want to see how well you can fight all three his words were cut off as his head was suddenly sent flying across the ground. His two companions jumped away from him because a clone of Naruto was standing behind him with a sword clicking, as it were. Naruto smirked as the two used the hidden mist and covered the entire area around the bridge. Naruto and Zabuza both thought they were idiots, as they both screamed from inside the mist, eight points, liver, lungs, spine, jugular vein, carotid artery, brain, kidneys, and heart. Which one should I go for? Suddenly the sound of screams, and metal against metal was heard, and nobody was sure who was doing what. Sakura wanted to faint. Sasuke wanted to know what was happening, but with the mist, and his Sharingan, he only saw the hidden mist. Takashi sweat drops, as he dodges a question Zabuza, did you really teach him silent killing? Through the mist. Zabuza who grunted from his attack, said yeah I thought the little shit too well. He's the only person who can beat me in it. Feels like he is evening the numbers though. His voice coming from everywhere. The mist stopped and got back to back when they heard this and had one thought going through their head. Crap. And dropped the mist they had up. The sight that created them was something they had not expected to see. When Sakura saw it she threw up and Sasuke became even more pissed. Tazuna fainted. Tsunami looked green and Inari was shocked. Zabuza was standing with his sword in the chest of one of the ninjas he was fighting with two headless bodies on the ground beside him. A dome of ice mirrors was slowly falling, as Haku stepped out, and two men were on the ground at her feet. Takashi had stabbed a kunai in the neck of one of his enemies, and was holding off another, as the last two were standing back to back prepared for an attack. Naruto who was standing behind Gato said oh man, you just ruined my fun. As Gatos's eyes got big realizing the voice came from behind him, and all of his merc were dead. Each with a different point Naruto and Zabuza called out. Beto started to scream and ran away, but Naruto picked him up and said to Kakashi, here's a blast from the past for you. And formed a Rasengan in his hand in less than a second and slammed it into Gato's back propelling him forward toward the mist down and screaming before he died. Kakashi's eyes got as big as a silver dollar. He was not sure if Naruto could use it yet, but knew Jiraiya would teach it to him sooner or later. When Naruto showed it in the Hokage office Kakashi passed out. Naruto looked at the five remaining mist. Haku and Zabuza had already killed their five, and the one Naruto killed. The three remaining ones Kakashi had been fighting looked tired and beat up, but not as bad as Kakashi. Naruto looked at them and said so, do you still want to fight or do you want to run back to the Mizukage and tell him of your failure? The black-haired one that was going to fight Naruto charged at Naruto, only to have land in his neck knocking him out. Sasuke finally screamed why can't I copy that? I demand you tell me how to do it and why I could not copy it. Everyone ignored him, and Kakashi looked at the last four, and said it looks like we are in a stalemate. Your choice. The Naruto that was standing behind his last remaining enemy, turned into a puddle of water, and Naruto started to walk toward the rest of the group. The mist got in a triangle back to back, and said we have orders not to return without both Zabuza's head, and the blonde. He made the hidden mist a laughing stock of the great nations. Naruto who laughed at this turned cold narrowing his eyes, and said all I did, was stop your village from making slaves of a village full of innocent people. I did not even harm one of your ninja, but showed everyone they are perverts. You should call yourself lucky I did not do what I did to Iwa then. You know me, a sexy blonde which flatters me, Iwa knows me, as the second flash of death. I killed 40 of their ninja in 2 minutes a little over a month, after what I did to you for trying to get revenge for what my father did to them. They tried poisoning my family, while we were in rain country. I am immune to all poisons, but I detected it along with the rest of my family. When they came to get rid of our bodies they learned one lesson quickly. Leave the Kazama family alone. I am the second person in history to ever get a flea on sight order, and I am only 13 years old. My father was the first. 
Tell you cage to learn from this, or next time I won't hold my friend back from killing you all. As the heir to the Kazama family I give Zabuza and Haku the protection of the Kazama clan. Now get out of my sight. As his eyes turned red. The voice in the middle of the group said before I get pissed. Everyone was shocked because another water clone had appeared right in the middle of the three ninja. The three were actually scared and quickly jumped off the bridge and started running on the water below away from the bridge. Naruto sighed and released the water clone and Kakashi looked at him and said was that true what you said about Iwa? Naruto said yes. We were on the border of rain and wind. I was getting ready to see my fiancé in the wind and somehow they got word about me and my family being together. They decided to take us all out in one strike. They tried to poison our food, but with three of the best medics in the world, me who is immune like I said, and Sen and we all detected it. Sasuke came over and tried to punch Naruto. Keyword tried. Naruto ducked at the last second, grabbed Sasuke's arm, pulled it behind his back, and tripped him, making his face smack the bridge. Naruto said, why did you try to attack me? Sasuke was even more pissed, but could not get up to fight, because Naruto had sat on his back, and kept him from making hand signs. Sasuke answered my question. Why could I not copy what you use? I need it too. Naruto said kill Itachi. I know all about your brother, and what he did. You're giving me a headache. Now sleep tight teen. And hit a pressure point on his neck knocking him out. As he stood up Sakura came over screaming at Naruto for hurting Sasuke, and Haku got pissed, and hit her with a needle, as well. Naruto sighed, and said thank you, Haku. Tabuza walked over with Kakashi, and asked do you mean what you said about us having your protection? Naruto chuckled, and said yeah. I was going to wait until you came to Kano had to tell you, but the little dipshit pissed me off. Looking at Got Osa's body. Naruto looked around and said to Kakashi, you don't happen to have an up-to-date bingo book do you? Kakashi's eyes got big and pulled it out and said, as a matter of fact I do. Naruto took it and created 25 cage bunchins and had them go out through the mist ninja and the merc. Kakashi asked, what do you think your finances will do about having a new girl in your life? Pervertedly while looking at Haku. Naruto said really, I don't even think about it. I admit Haku is beautiful, but she's. Haku said in by. Naruto is supportive of that, but he already has made a deal with his three fiancés, and I doubt he would want another. Naruto was thinking actually, I do like you, and would make you a fourth, but I just don't want to have you, and Anko teams up against me again. Also Tamari and Kuro and I don't like competition. The clone came over after about 10 minutes of cleaning up the mess of bodies, and finding any bounties, and said we got about 15 C-class total. The rest don't have any we know of. I need a ceiling scroll. Naruto pulled one out and handed it to the clone who went to the others. The next day the bridge was finished and the group of six headed toward Kanoha. Although it was more like a group of ten because four clones carried Sasuke and he was knocked out again. Tsubusa walks up toward Naruto and asks how exactly did you take all of them out so quickly back there. I know you're good but not that good. Naruto said cage bunchins. I created ten of them when the idiots covered the bridge and had my miss clone fight the two most winds I had left. Since they could not see in the fog the mercs went down quickly. You're not the only one of the seven left Tsubusa. Kakashi, who was walking just a little behind them, narrowed his eyes and listened to the talk. Naruto said Kisum is also still alive and will be coming to Kanoha soon. Him and his partner Itachi have orders to kidnap me to take the Kayubi. Tsubusa said, but didn't you already absorb the Kayubi? Naruto said yes, but we are keeping it a secret so we can spring a trap for the guys who want to destroy all the hidden villages with the power of the demons. Kisum is one of that group. Kakashi's eyes widened when he heard that, and wondered how Naruto knew this, and Naruto said I know you heard Kakashi, so join our conversation. The only two I don't want to hear are knocked out right now. Kakashi said, why don't you want them to know about Naruto? Naruto sighed, and walked over quickly, drew his sword, and sliced a tree off to make a stump, and sat down, and looked at everyone, and said Sakura will do anything for Sasuke. The tree climbing exercise showed that more than anything. After she did it she watched him the entire time, and never even tried to do any training after that. Answer me this Kakashi. What is Sasuke besides an Uchiha? Kakashi looked at Naruto and said I don't. Naruto interrupted him, closed his eyes, and said an Avenger. He will betray anyone to get the power to kill his brother. Even the Leaf Village. Do you know how to get to the final level of the Sharingan like Itachi, Kakashi? Kakashi narrowed his eyes, and Naruto said you must feel sorrow for killing your best friend. That is what Sasuke will do to kill his brother. Kakashi said, but Sasuke won't do that. Naruto said, and that's why you won't remember opening his eyes, and Kakashi sees his eyes, and faints. His eyes were no longer blue. They were red, but had all different patterns of commas, and lines, and diamonds, as well as his veins on the side of them popped out. Naruto sighs, closing his eyes, and changing them back to normal. He then went through some hand seals, and said memory implant, and tapped Kakashi on the head. Tsubusa said what did you do for Naruto, and what was that thing with your eyes? 
Naruto said I did that so Kakashi won't remember what I said on the bridge or on the way here. Konohas does not need to know about me being as strong as I am right now, because we have spies in the village, because we are going to be attacked during the exam soon. He also has blind faith in Ichiha because of his dead teammate that gave him that eye. I learned that from Yumanko before, and implanted a fake memory that I put in both the harpy and the team over there already. As for the eye, it's a bloodline I created. You know how I told you about how I have. Since I have absorbed him all I know how to create my own bloodline with it, and gave myself a way to fight the Sharingan, as well as a few other tricks. I called the Turnigan, let's go. Then created a couple of cage bunchins to take Kakashi's body, as well. They continued on their way after that. When the gates of Konoha appeared a team of Abnu appeared, and was about to start something, when Naruto said you will not harm anyone under the protection of the Kazama clan. And Abnu in a sheep's mask asked explain, why since you are the only person not out right now. Naruto said Kakashi used his Sharingan to train the Ichiha. Sakura thought the Ichiha died, and passed out. Sasuke tried to Kakashi the Shodan, and has chakra exhaustion, and these two are under my protection, and we would like to see the Hokage. The Hokage appeared then with Naruto in a swirl of flames and leaves, and said settle down. I have already talked to Naruto, and they are free to enter. Naruto talking to Abnu went up in a puff of smoke. Zabuza chuckled, and Haku giggled at the reactions the Abnu had. The Hokage said follow me, and led them to the tower. Zabuza and Haku after explaining about themselves, and with help from Naruto and Jirei were made members of Konoha. Zabuza, as a special, and Haku, as a chunin. She was going to start work at the hospital. They were both put under probation for 90 days with only half pay, and a curfew with limited access to the village, but they agreed. They were given a place in the village, and Team 7 was put in the hospital, except for Naruto who appeared in his room, and passed out within minutes. Naruto was going to look for his fiancés, but Team 8 was on a mission to a village north of Konoha, and Anko was with an avenue, that were looking at a supposed increase in missing nins near the border to Suna. The Naruto team was given the rest of the week off because in 10 days the Chunin exams start. Zabuza and Haku both got a two-bedroom apartment on the west side of town. Hyatt and Zabuza both become quick friends because of their love for each other. Haku was given the same schedule as Shizun and was apprenticing under her even more to learn what Tsune did not taught her. Yuria had to leave town to deliver the next volume of his book to his publishing company. That's his official excuse. The real reason is he asked Tsune to marry him and ran before she realized what he said. Shizun, when not training Haku and working at the hospital, has been seen with a certain academy instructor. Tsunade, after figuring out what he had said, tried to find the pervert, but he was done. The third was trying to make her his successor, but she kept saying no. Rin has been spending time at her sister's house. Naruto was having a good day. It had been five days since he and his team got back. He has been doing some pranks on his team every day this week. He got up and walked toward the hospital to see his teammates. He snickered at the reaction he got when he brought them into the hospital. Flashback. Day 1. Naruto walked into the hospital with the passed out Sakura, Sasuke, and Kakashi. A nurse ran up and asked what did you do to them boy. Naruto smiled and said Kakashi sensei passed out from showing Sasuke how to use his Sharingan. Sakura passed out when Sasuke asked her to help him restore his clan, and Sasuke passed out when he was practicing, as Kakashi showed him. Personally I think it was funny when Sasuke asked Sakura to get something to help her get pregnant faster. If you could, you might want to go ahead and give it to her. And he dropped all three on the floor of the hospital and left with a smirk. Then flashback. Flashback day two. The next day when he walked into the hospital he changed into a doctor he hated from his childhood and walked up to the nurse's desk and said follow me. And started walking toward his teammate's room. The nurse right behind him. When he walked in Kakashi was still passed out but Sakura was awake. Sasuke was asleep. He had woken up earlier but did not want to deal with Sakura. The doctor walked up and said Sakura, your teammate when he dropped you off yesterday said something, and I was wondering if you could confirm it. Did Sasuke ask you to help him restore his clan? Sakura blinked trying to get the fog out of her brain, and she remembered a memory of that, but did not know if it was true, and she said yeah, I remember that, but I thought it was a dream. The doctor nodded, and walked to her chart, and wrote in it, and said please give this to her. Showing the nurse the orders. He learned medical jargon from Tsunade and Shizun in previous lives. The nurse looked at it, and paled, and said are you sure sir, I mean want that. The doctor cut her off, and said that's the whole point. Well you're at it, give this to the Ichiha also. Don't want to upset him, do we? Writing in Sasuke's chart, and showing the nurse. The nurse played again, and was about to say something when a civilian council member walked in, and Naruto had to hide his smirk. The council member started to say something when the nurse said thank goodness maybe you can talk some sense into the doctor here. The council member looked at her, and said what are you getting at, woman? The nurse said the Chiha asked his teammate to help him restore his clan while on the last mission, and the doctor here is wanting to give them fertilization drugs. 
The council member got a look on his face like he won the lotto, and said well you heard him, get to it. I will inform the rest of the council. And ran out of the room. Naruto looked at the nurse, and said is that anyway, to act toward your superiors. As he walked out the room, and walked down the hall into an empty room, closing the door. Dropping the hand she left the hospital by the window. Then flashback. Flashback day 3. This time Naruto turned into another doctor he hated, and walked up to the nurse's desk. The nurse from the previous day had called in sick today, so he said I need to check on the Chiha, and I need one of you to come with me. An old woman who could not properly see anything said I will help you doctor. And followed him toward the room. Naruto stopped at the supply cabinet, and got a bottle of medicine, and walked into the room, and asked how are you both feeling today. Takashi was asleep with a zichu itcha book over his face. Sakura, who was still disoriented from some pain medicine, said a little lightheaded. The doctor picked up her chart, and walked over to her, and ran a basic scan on her, and looked at her IV, and smirked, and wrote some more stuff in her chart, and said nurse, please make sure she gets these medicines added to her to help with the lightheadedness, and to get ready faster. And handed it to the nurse who looked at it through her glasses, and then picked them up, and looked before saying right away sir. And left the room to ask someone what it said. Once she was gone he went to the medical cabinet in the room, and got a needle, and drew up some of the medicine he grabbed earlier, and walked over to Sasuke, and injected it into his IV. Sakura looked at him, and asked what is that for. The doctor said it's to help him with the pain. The previous doctor left a note telling me he had muscle spasms last night. And walked out the room thinking actually that shot is more than enough to make him sterile. I don't care what they give him now. And he walked out of the hospital. Then flashback. Flashback day 4. Naruto walked into the hospital room, as himself except he had a long white robe like his father's on, but his hands were covered. He walked over, and handed Kakashi the newest edition of Icha Icha, and said perks of knowing the publisher. And walked over to Sasuke, and said so bastard, what are they feeding you? And he dropped the fork off the table beside his bed. Sasuke was breathing, and Naruto bent down to pick up the fork, and slapped a tag under Sasuke's bed, as he was standing up, and said what no answer. And waited a few minutes. Sasuke just humped, and looked out the window. Naruto sighed, and walked towards Sakura, and said how are you feeling? Sakura was starting to look frazzled, and she said leave. Now. Naruto sighed, and said so much for teamwork, and walked out the room. He smirked, as he walked by the nurse's station, and the emergency button for his teammates was going off. The nurses ran down to see what was going on, and saw Sasuke having muscle convulsions, and he heard a doctor say or strain him so he can't hurt himself. Then flashback. And now we have today. When Naruto walked into the room his teammates were in he had to hold his hand over his mouth at the sight that he saw. Kakashi was passed out from a blood loss, and his mask was red now, and his book was on the floor, Sasuke was chained to the bed rails with hospital restraints, and apparently the drugs he prescribed for Sakura had finally taken effect. As she was currently giving the boy one hell of a rodeo, though she did have the decency to have herself covered with a sheet. A nurse walked in that Naruto did recognize, as the nurse the council member talked to, and he asked her what did you give her. The nurse was shocked at the sight, and said the doctors ordered an IV of hormone modifiers to help someone get pregnant faster. It appears they also gave the Chiha the male enhancement drugs also. They have been going at this for a while now. Naruto blinked, and asked what do you mean, innocently. The nurse said according to the nurse on the last shift the girl had started around 2 in the morning. He woke for only a few moments before passing out, and she has been going off, and on ever since then. In fact I don't think she has stopped to sleep yet. We had to start giving her IV solutions of nutrients to keep her from dying. Naruto looked at her, and said then why don't you stop the IV or get her off of him. The nurse said can't, we were given strict orders from the council. Someone told them the Chi has selected his first girl, and they want to start the clan restoration. In fact I should not be telling you all of this, but the council is spreading the word already about it. Sakura's mother could not be happier. Naruto said then why don't you give them privacy, and remove Kakashi sensei. The nurse said he was ordered to stay for their protection until they stop. Naruto snorted, and said thanks, I will give them some privacy. And he turned, and walked out the room only to stop at the front desk, as Shizun said. Why do I think you had something to do with what's happening in your teammate's room? Naruto smiled a foxy smile, and said, Don't know what you're talking about, but you know the saying make love not war. And ran out of the hospital to avoid the clipboard that impaled into the wall where he was. He was in a good mood until he suddenly felt a huge amount of Kai, and knew only one person besides himself who could produce that much. He flamed to where he was feeling it, and sure enough there was Gar standing looking at the sound Jennings, and Gar said say that again. Yuzo said you heard us, kill the Kazama kid, or we will kill your sister. Naruto onto an avenue, and jumped to the ground, and said look here Jennings. You are here for the Chunin exams, and are not allowed to fight until your matches, or we will have to have you leave. Kin said fine, we were just leaving. It's nice to see you again, Tamari. Gar was about to kill them, when he saw it just barely hidden under the cloaked hand of the avenue. He knew there were only three people who could do that. 
He watched them leave, and once they were gone Naruto dropped his hinge, and said are you alright? Looking at the three. Tamari sighed, and said yes. We just arrived, and were on our way to our hotel room when they stopped us. Naruto said forget the hotel room, you are all staying at my place. As two more of him appeared, and grabbed Gar and Kankuro's shoulder, and they both flamed away, and Naruto picked Tamari up bridal style, and left him one also. When they got to his home Tsunade was reading a scroll, and looked up, and smiled before going back to the scroll she was reading. Naruto sighed, and said I wish I could kill that bastard right now. Tsunade stopped reading, and said what's wrong. Tamari said we were heading toward our hotel room, when three sound ninjas confronted us, and said we either kill Naruto-kun, or they will kill me. Tsunade clenched her fist, and she looked at Naruto, and said are you ready? Naruto snorted, and said yep. They don't know what hit them, and I already have my teammates preoccupied. Tsunade said so that was you that did that. Naruto smiled a grin, and said yep, and the best part is the bastard can't get her pregnant. The three San Jinins looked at each other, and said what are you both talking about? Kankuro asked. Naruto said I into different doctors I hated from my childhood, and had them fill out hormone drugs to make Sakura, my pink hair teammate, so horny she has to have sex to get it out of her system, and she is currently raping my other teammate who is her crush. I gave him the same drugs, but I also gave him something to make him permanently sterile. On the way back from our previous mission I implanted a memory in both of them, and my senses had to where they all heard Sasuke ask Sakura to restore his clan with him, so they think it was real. When Sakura and Sasuke get it out of their system they will be out for a week, and guess when that is going to be. Gara smiled an evil smile, and sat during the Chunin exams. Tsune did some hand seals, and her looks changed, and said, you're so mean Naruto Baka. As her appearance of Sakura. Yureya, who was at the stairs, also showed some signs, and said she's right dope. As he appeared to be Sasuke. Naruto smiled, and said, those may look like normal hinges, but the only way they will come down, is if they run out of chakra. I modified the henge granny uses to make her look younger, even though she looks nice without dodging a fist, and I also have an area in the forest set up with seals, where once I activate it a barrier appears, and you can't outer dig out or jump over. I set it up to trap Orochimaru himself. Gara asked, so where's the party? Naruto sat right in the middle of our gates one mile in. Just to my location, and hide if you want to have some fun. I have markers all over the battlefield, and no summons will be able to come in over the size of a small summon. No bosses because there is no room. If he tries to summon Manta he will smack the barrier, and hurt himself, and dispel Manta who will probably kill Orochimaru if he escapes. I just ask everyone to watch Gar. You, and I both can recover from anything he throws at us, the rest can't. Gar nodded, and said just save me some fun. Naruto nodded, and said of course, just don't forget to take out Kabuto afterwards. Kinkuro sat his puppet on the ground, and said Crow is ready for him. Tamari started to polish her fan, and let out an evil chakra, as a dark aurora appeared around her, and everyone sweat dropped, and stepped back, and Gara said Shukaka's scarred right now. The next few days blew by quickly. All the teams started to prepare, and finally the day of the exams arrived. Kakashi along with Sasuke, and Sakura, were currently in a safe house in the mountain, with 25 of the most trusted Abnu watching over them. Sasuke, and Sakura were in a medically induced coma. Of course Sakura would not be walking right for a few days anyways. Shizune sweat dropped, as she did a medical on her, and Sasuke. Kakashi said, why are we doing this again? Shizune said Orochimaru has infiltrated the exams, but we don't know who he is disguised as Tsunade, and Jureya are also disgusted, and you are here to protect your other two students in case he finds out. Kakashi sighs, and reads his book. Note, until I say otherwise Sasuke is actually Jureya, and Sakura is Tsunade. Meanwhile across the village Team 7 walked into the academy, and made it to the second floor, and Sasuke looked at everyone, and remembered the plan, and said drop the, we are only on the second floor, and started walking through the crowd. Rumors could be heard, and a genin tried to punch him, but Sasuke just stepped back, as Rock Lee intercepted the punch. A few minutes later Rock Lee said I challenge you Sasuke Chi had to a fight. Sasuke said no. And turned, and kept on walking. They walked into the room only for a scream of Sasuke Khan to pierce their ears. Ino grabbed onto Sasuke who grabbed her ass, and her boobs at the exact moment she was on him. Sakura became enraged, and Sasuke said remember Sakura, I have to have more than one winch since I already slept with you. Giving one of his perverted grins, as well as an evil grin at the same time making Tsunade realize he is making the girl get over her crush with the bastard. Naruto sweat drops, as Ino punches Sasuke, and runs to her team crying. Right into the arms of Choji who is comforting her. Teammate walks over, and Kiba says, so cuz, we're finally going to do this thing. Naruto said yep, but let's wait until we have a crowd in the finals or semi-finals to show our skills, so that way we are at our best. Kiba said, deal. Shino looked at Sakura, and Sasuke, and said Naruto, who are you? Naruto looked dead into Shino's eyes, and said my teammates for the exams, you know how many enemies we have here, so we don't want to release any important info. 
Shino nodded, as a silver-haired guy with glasses walked over, and said you're right Kazama-kun. That is some good advice. Allow me to introduce myself, my name is Kabuto, and I would like to help you all out with the test. Shikamaru said, troublesome, what do you mean? Kabuto said I have info on everyone here, and if you want I could tell you so that you can have an easier time. Niji walked over, and said what do you have on him, pointing toward Naruto. Kabuto shuffled his cards, and said well let's see. Holy shit. This can't be right. Everyone looked at him, and Lee said what? Kabuto said Naruto Uzumaki Kazama, Aka Sexy Blonde, aka the second flash of death, Aka the Music Man. He. Naruto interrupted him, and said I know Miss gave me Sexy Blonde, and Iwa gave me the second flash of death, but who gave me Music Man? Kabuto looked at his card, and said actually, that comes from the village and rain country you saved. You also just got the new name Butcher of Wave. Kiba asked, what's with all the names cuz? Kabuto said the name he got from Mist is when he defeated 1200 Mists in what one, he got the second flash of death from Iwa when he killed 25. Naruto interrupted, and said 40. Kabuto looked at him, and said 40 of their ninjas while using his father's signature move, which also got him listed in the bingo book with something only his father had, a flea on sight order. He got the music man because of the music he used when he defeated the 1200 Miss Nina, and he got the butcher of wave from Mist when he killed 200 Merc, and 10. Naruto said I only killed one, the 200 Mercs, and their boss Gato, and we let three leave, Zabuza, Haku, and Kakashi got the others. What else do you have on me? Everyone was looking at him like he was crazy, and Ino asked, did you really kill all those people, Naruto? Naruto said well you can ask the Iwa, and Miss Nins that are running out the windows if it's true. Everyone turned to the sound of broken glass, as six figures jumped out the window running. Everyone sweat dropped, and Ibiki appeared, and said what did you do this time Kazama? Naruto pulled out his end pod, and said this. And hit play, and the sound of the car tires screech, and glass breaking, and Stone Cold's music started to play. I don't own the music or person known as Stone Cold. They're owned by someone else, as he walked to the front of the class with his black cloak on, and his sword on his side. Ibiki sweat dropped, and thought why me? As Naruto started walking with the music, most of the people were looking at him like he was crazy. A blonde girl started walking over with a fan on her back, and Kiba looked at her, and said hey baby, how about you, and I go to the dog pound. The girl looked at him, and said sorry, I'm taking. Kiba said show me who the loser is, and I will make him beg for mercy. Suddenly a pair of arms surrounded the girl, and a head rested on her shoulder, and the head said say something about making me beg cuz. Kiba looked at Naruto, and said you gotta be shitting me. Naruto snorted, and said nope, I told you my third fiancé was from another village. I have had it arranged since I was five I think. Kiba said why do you have to get all the good looking women, first you got Kurenai sensei, then you got that crazy snake woman Anko, or whatever you call her. When Kiba said snake woman, a genin from grass narrowed his eyes, and listened in. Naruto said well what can I say, I got lucky to have found three very beautiful, loving wives. Ibiki cleared his throat, and said I hate to interrupt this little party you are having, but find your damn seat so we can take the test. Naruto sighed, and kissed the neck of Tamari, as he let her go, and took his seat which was next to Hinata. Ibiki said finally, the test is simple, you get 10 points, you get caught cheating you lose 2 points every time you cheat, you get the wrong answer, you get points taken away. If you run out of points you, and your team fail. You have a test in front of you with 9 questions. The 10th question will be asked after 45 minutes. Good luck, and begin. Naruto looked at the test, and having taken it, so many times wrote the answer in 2 minutes making several eyebrows go up. He then pulled out a scroll, and bit his thumb, smeared some blood on the scroll, and out popped 4 bottles of sake. He started to do some hand signs, and said ice style, ice party style, and the 4 bottles got frost on them, and one of the instructors, that was watching the test slapped her forehead, and muttered idiot. Naruto grabbed 2 bottles, and tossed them behind them in opposite directions, without looking only for Sasuke, and Sakura to each grab him. Naruto then bit his thumb again, and started to do some hand signs before slamming his hand on the table, and said Kuchi is no jutsu, summoning technique, and an orange frog appeared on his desk. The frog blinked, and said you bro, what's up? Naruto pulled out a deck of cards, and opened the sake, and said $10,000 entry fee, in or out of Gamakichi. Gamakachi reached into his pouch, and said deal fox. As he sat his money on the table. Everyone was sweat dropping, and Ibiki said you do realize there is an important test going on right now. Naruto said yeah, but I am already done, and already found the pigeons, you want in. I will cut you a deal. If I can beat you in 5 games out of 7 at 5 card draw, after I make you, let me join the interrogation division when you have someone you can't crack. If I lose you can have the rest of my winnings, but if my friend here wins I will buy you that. Throwing a book to Ibiki, that has a bookmark in it. Ibiki opens the book, and says, deal the cards. Everyone sweat drops, and a sad Ibiki sir, don't forget the test. Ibiki looked at him, and said the way the kid laid it out, I will no matter what, and I have wanted this for a while. Showing the book to those who passed out. 
Another asked what is it sir? Ibiki looked at the, and recognized him from his interrogation unit, and said to remember that portable interrogation office we read about in the last issue of the bingo book. They nodded, and Ibiki said that code, that has all the interrogation equipment is what he is offering me. If he makes it, I will let him join. Don't forget who his other fiancé is. Everyone in the room was listening, and the Chunin must not have heard Kiba because he said, who was it again sir? Naruto did some hand signs, and shot out some snakes from his sleeves that wrapped around them, and said do you know now? Ibiki looked at Naruto, and said how do you have a snake contract Naruto? Demokachi said man this sucks a poker, bro here had a contest 2 years ago, and wound up getting about 20 summoning contracts out of it. Ibiki asked why would the summons play poker with you kid? Naruto said they can't beat me while drinking, and I offered them 2 tails worth of my chakra to do whatever they wanted if they could beat me. I never lose a poker. Besides man is a pussy, I beat him not only at drinking, but poker, and fighting. I made him change the deal he has with Orochimaru. Now if the Habitim wants to summon Manda he has to pay 3 times the normal sacrifices. With a smile on his face. The Reindin who had narrowed his eyes a moment ago, was sending huge amounts of color intent at Naruto who said man, do you feel that? It feels like a bug bite. All the genins in a row diagonal from Naruto to the Reindin passed out from the Kai. Ibiki and Naruto started to play cards, and the time flew by with Naruto unsealing another bottle of sake for Ibiki to drink. The rest of the team started to work on their tests trying to ignore the spectacle they were watching. Soon the 45 minutes were up, and Ibiki looked up from his cards, and said okay, time for the last question. You have to decide if you take it or not. If you take it, and miss it, you will never become. If you decide to not take it, get up, and leave now. He then laid two cards down, and drew two more, and Naruto drew three, Gemakachi drew one, and several people got up, and started to leave. All the genins that passed out from the Kai earlier had left, so now there were only 16 teams left. Naruto looked at Ibiki, and said so has anyone else popped up with those weak, cursed seals of Orochimaru's. Ibiki said no, I still can't believe you figured out how to get rid of them. Naruto snorted, as he shuffled the cards in his hand, and said if that's all the skill he has, then it's no wonder my dad was named Yandain Hokage instead of him. Ibiki said so did you found out anything else about him yet? Ignoring everyone listening in. Naruto said I got word that after he left Akatsuki he went, and was planning on starting his own village somewhere. I bet he goes, and being the idiot he is makes it where whatever he names the village is what his attacks will be based off of like the village of shit where they crap on the ground and pick it up. And throw it at you or the village of Imonis where they walk around with Vaseline or something like that. I swear the way my grandfather Jiraiya and grandmother Tsune talk about him with Anko, I don't see how he is anything other than a wimp. Smoking to himself, as he feels 9 different Kai. Naruto got an evil grin, and said I bet he even gets himself a personal medic, that can put the Vaseline on for him since his hands are so rough from playing with himself. I wonder if the bastard has figured out how to do that body switch the Hokage told me about. I bet he needs a new body from getting his other ones used up from spending, so much time playing with any idiot who follows him. Picture this, yes or Chimurusama, your hands are nice, and oily from playing with the snakes. Do you need me to put your experiments away for you, or did you find a way to make the banana pump work for you? Ibiki along with most of the class could not take it any longer, and started bursting out laughing, and Ibiki said between laughs, what would you do if he ever heard you say that? Naruto smirked, and said please, that wimp is too afraid to fight me. I bet if he ever fought me I would have him on his knees begging for me to kill him. I would bitch slap him, and take that sword of his whatever it's called an ass cutter or something like that, and use Kakashi sensei's 1000 years of death on him, but he might enjoy that. Well I guess I will have to wait, and see. He won't come near me anyways, because he thinks he can master all the in the world. Hell even if he had Sasuke Sharingan up there he could never master them all. Hell, I would even make a bet for him. If he could beat me in a one-on-one -on -one fight I would teach him or Sengen. But well, time to finish our hands. Naruto held up his hand, and started to count down from 5 4 3 2 1, and the glass to the window shattered, and a black ball of cloth exploded, and Enko said okay Gaki, I am your next. Naruto interrupted her, and said hold on for a minute, sir him. So Ibiki, what are you going to do? Enko, and Ibiki said I'm all in. Demikachi had just about as much as Ibiki, and pushed him in as well, and Naruto pushed in, and said call. They all showed their cards. Naruto won with the royal flush. Demikachi had a straight, and Ibiki had four of a kind. Naruto smiled, and said well Ibiki, even though I won, here is that code I promised. Okay Serham, you can go now. And he dodged which hit his seat from Enko. Demikachi grabbed his sake bottle, and left in a puff of smoke. Enko looked at him ready to kill, and set everyone to training area 44 now. If you're not there in 10 minutes you fail, and I will kill you. And left in a swirl of leaves. Naruto sighed, and said what's her problem, and left in a swirl of flames. Shocking many. Ibiki was a kid in a candy store looking at his new coat. That's it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed my video. And see you in the next part of this video. Till then, sayonara.